When you fall, you face plant for Jesus. You face plant in front of Jesus for the devil. And we know that you... But listen, get up out of that face plant. Get up. Start walking forward and move on and leave it behind you. We are a church. We are a kingdom-minded church that we will pick you up, lift you up, grab you under the arm. If you can't move your feet, I'm fixing to get under your arms and I'm fixing to drag you and I'm fixing to pull you out of the mess that you're in. We have no idea what they had to deal with. We, we can't even fathom what they had to deal with. So let's get to this text real quick. I want to read chap, chapter 8, verse 15 through 21. Then God said to Noah, come out of the ark. Everybody say, come out. Come out of that stink. You and your wife and your sons and your wives bring out every kind of living creature that is with you. First, let me just rewind a little bit and just remind everyone that they were in that ark. Many people think... 40 days and 40 nights, boom, over, it's over with. I even heard a minister the other day uh, in a sermon. He said, man, 40 days and 40 nights. I'm like, you got it wrong, bro. They were in there for a little over a year. You just tell. So getting no electricity in a boat with a, with a window and every living creature and every living creature does stuff yeah daily sometimes three times four times a day every living creature the birds the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase and in number upon it. don't you know when he's when the lord said moses come I, lord i've been waiting on that for about 365 days now i've been waiting so Noah came out, I'm sure he came running out, skipping out, together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the earth came out of the ark one kind after another. Verse 20, then Noah, then Noah built an altar to the Lord. The first thing he did when he came out was he said, I am going to build an altar. I'm about to give God thanks for delivering me from the stink that I was in. Amen. He, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing, the pleasing aroma. There were other smells that were all around Noah and his family all throughout the other 365 plus days that they were on board that ark. And that there was some safety in that. But even in the safety from the storm, there was some stink. There was some times of trouble. There were some places where nobody wants to put their nose and their face and their body or nothing else. And then the Lord says, now I'm smelling something that is a pleasing aroma. What was it? It was a sacrifice. It was an offering. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood. I'm just going to stop there and move on. All of us deal with the stench. All of us have fallen short. Isaiah 64 and 6. All of us have become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. You see, every living creature contributed to the stench in the ark. Even Noah and his family, they contributed to the stench in the ark. When, but when Noah came out, Noah's sacrifice, it was a sweet aroma. In your stench, in your stink, when it's still... It doesn't say that Noah came out of the ark and immediately took a shower and was zestfully clean. You know, you're not fully clean unless you're zestfully clean. Some of y'all are like, my kids, Jaren's, he's like, Dad, funny, I don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about. I use Axe. How many of y'all got, got kids? Y'all got young teenage young men, young ladies, and they don't bathe? They just do the Axe cover-up scent. 
You know, I hunt. I'm a hunter. I like to hunt. And I will go bathe and take and do the scent-free wash and the hair, get all the scent off. Then I use a cover scent, and I take that cover scent, and I'll put it on me. And sometimes it's a pine scent, a pine straw. It might be a, a <laughs> it's funny, a, a urine scent. That, now I'll put it on my shoes. Steve, hunters, we know. We got to, we're drawing that big buck out of the woods. And we just a little, tss, tss, and my wife says, oh, I'm so glad that it's hunting season. You're going to come home and you smell like, yeah, that's, 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 boy, that's really a turn on for me. But we got kids that don't even bathe now. They go to the, there's showers at the, at the athletic department in the room there. And, but no, 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 we're just going to take the ax and we're just going to, and we're going to cover up. I got a little demonstration I want to show y'all because it matters what you use. Everybody look up here real quick and I know they got a camera they can put on this. I don't know how close they can get but we got two types of deodorant and antiperspirant and I've got one that I literally put this one on today and I don't put this one on except when I'm going to be around people and I know I'm going to be hugging up on people because this one's got some ingredient. It's got some, listen to me, it's got some ingredients that get rid of stink. This one, the red one has its old spice scent of bergamot. Whatever in the world a bergamot is, I like it. And what's funny is it says captain on there. I, don't, I, just, I didn't buy it for that. I, I buy it because of the smell. Smell matters. Now, this is the one that my wife and I use the majority of the time because it does not have some of those what I call bad ingredients. But this one works. Now, this one does not cover up the stink. It does, it does not get, I'll say this, it does not get rid of the stink. When I have this one, I don't have a stench. When I have this one, uh, it's, it's doable. And I thought it was so funny that this one is called secret. I know, I know men in here right now are like, bro, <laughs> you're a hunter, you're a firefighter, you're a dude, and you put secret? Yeah, strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. I, buy, I don't buy it because, listen, I, because it's the, I want something that's good for my body. This has got, it's got less and less ingredients, extra ingredients. But the thing that really doesn't get rid of the stink, and it's called secret. Don't you know that a life that is lived in secret, if I've got a secret sin, if, God, if I've got a secret, if I've got something that I'm hiding, I'm, I'm being secretive. I'm having to hide from God. I'm having to hide from my spouse. I'm having to hide. I'm having to sneak around. I'm telling you, you have got some stink on you, and it ain't working you haven't lost it. You need to use something that's got some real ingredients. Now let's get on to the real matter here. Let's get on to the real point. You need to use something that's got some real proven, tried through the fire. It works when everything else has failed. And you're like, I am at odds with my wife. We're done. I cannot tell you how many times I have gotten texts in the short time of four years pastoring. And I get a text that says, hey, pastor, we appreciate your effort and everything you poured into us. But we are done. Period. <laughs> Send it. I get that text. I'm, I'm living my life. Hey, I'm li it's good. Today's a good day. I'm riding around I'm in the car. I'm on my mower. I'm doing something. I'm doing something. I'm having a good day. I'm having a good day. Bless God. Yeah, pastor and stuff. And sometimes you have good days though. And then you get that text and you're like, did you, did you get that text, Bree? Did, oh, are we on a group text now? Okay. They're, they're done. They quit. That's okay. I have a moment. Just so, just so you'll know, if you ever send me that text, that's going to be my reaction that you don't see on the other end of the phone. I'm going to take the phone, and I'm not mad at you. This is what I do. I say, I hate the devil. I get mad because I love y'all. When I say I love you, I love you. And when somebody comes after my son, I get mad, and I will take up for him, even to the point of getting physical with the person. 
And I'm ready to get physical with the devil when I get a text like that and I say, man, I hate the devil. We have poured into them and I know this is an attack from the enemy and I know this is an attack from the devil himself and I am not going to sit by and watch this marriage destroyed. I am not going to sit by and let stink and stench just rule and go into a home and let the devil just work his way in and his fingers and his nasty tentacles and the filth and stench that the devil is himself and work into your family. We will stand by you. We will live you up in prayer we will be there for you and you're sitting by a whole bunch of people and we are here for you we will help you you will be delivered from the stench and there will be a fragrance of freedom in the name of Jesus thank God he died for our sins he rose he came back to life and he is alive today if he's changed your life today I wish somebody would just give him some praise and just give somebody some hope if you're here today and you're like I need some hope I, I am just feeling like I quit I'm done I'm done I am done done you know there's done and then there's done done you're not done you're not allowed to be done you're not allowed to be we're not going to allow you to quit why? Because there may be a day when I feel like I want to quit. And you say, no, no, oh, no, uh-uh, buddy. You jumped all over me and we go, oh, no, we in this together, baby. I ain't quitting. I didn't quit. Here we are six months later. Oh, now you, uh-huh. No, you ain't quitting either. Here we go. Here we go. The one who caused the storm can calm the storm. The one who shut the door can open the door. Amen. If he's going to remove the smell and the dirtiness of your sins today, you have got to have the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost power of God working within you today. In Jesus' name, it's going to happen and it's about to happen. I believe it in Jesus' name. It's a great feeling to be clean, to be free from sin, free from your past, free from the change. But it's going to take the supernatural. The supernatural. Because within yourself, and I, it was me and my family, I got this. I'm going to fix me. Just leave me alone. Don't drag me to church one more time. Don't invite me to another Bible study. Don't tell me that I need to read this devotional. Don't tell me that I need to pray this prayer. Don't tell me that I need to do anything because I'm going to do it when I get good and well ready to do it. And when I do, I'm going to do it. So at 20 years old, didn't do it. 25 years old, didn't do it. 26, 20, year after year after year after year. And look, the whole time, going to church, going to church, going to church, going to church, playing the drums. Playing the drums, playing the drums. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. I'm in bondage. Thank you, Lord, that someone else has been set free from sin. I'm not... Thank you, Lord, that you, you're a deliverer and I'm not delivered. Thank you, Lord, that there's a great family and marriage going on and mine's not. Thank you. Now, look, I don't want to pay too much of a, a, a doom and gloom of my family and my life. We had way more wins than we ever had losses. And my boys grew up in a great home and I have a beautiful wife and an amazing wife. And we had an amazing and had and have and will have an amazing marriage. But there were times when I allowed... Because of what the, my choice of what I was using, you know, this right secret, it's not working. It's not working. If I would have worn this today and gone out there to the foyer after the message and hugged up on all of y'all, some of y'all would have been very nice to me and be like, oh, hey, Pastor, love you. And you're going to be about, you're going to wait, you're going to be super nice, you're going to be very secretive about it, you're going to, well, secret, you're going to, uh, you're going to wait. You're going to go out to the car. And you're going to get in the car. You're going to be on the way to the restaurant. You're like, honey, did you, did you happen to smell? The, the, was it just me or did, did he have an odor? <laughs> Babe, I smelled it too. And I tell you what, man, I tell you what, that was bad. Here's the thing. That's something that we can put right here. You know that the science has told us that there is... There are memories 
that come from the olfactory nerves in our, in our nose, in our senses. I don't want to go into all, I did a lot of research on it, uh, an adequate amount. Here's the, the, the point. You smell something and you tie it to a memory. My mother has a little figurine that is, it's green and it's, it's a little boy and girl and it's got a little metal hook that goes up to a little piece of tinsel. No, not uh, mistletoe. And, and it's in a box. And that has been in our family since I was, a, I mean, maybe four or five years old. It came from Avon. If that tells, that's telling my age. Avon. She takes that thing every Christmas. She unpacks it. The box is tattered and torn. It's, it's, you know, it's not what it used to be. But there's a scent there. There's something there that when I smell it, I walk up at Christmas and I want to smell it. I'm like, you know what? It takes me back. I can smell it and I can close my eyes and, and I can go back and, and, I, can, and I, can, I can reminisce and I can, I can see my dad and, and I, can, I can see the, the great times and I can see myself as a child and I can see, I can just go back there with the smell. I want you today to, it's time, it's so, it's past time for some of you to tie yourself to a fragrance of freedom, a pleasing aroma, a pleasing fragrance to the Lord. Everybody hear me today, sin stinks and sin is horrible and it has a stench and it has something that ties to it and, and just the smell of sin and you can go back because there's some other smells I'm not talking about literal smells, but go with me here. Work with me on this. There are some other memories. There are some other smells, a stench of sin, a memory. And I can have that memory and I can go back to the times. And I can, I can go back there in my mind and say, man, all glory to God because I'm not there. All glory to God because I am not there. Lord, you saved me. You delivered me. And I was set free and my marriage was on fire and everything's good. But just know this, in your course of life, in your working, in your day to day, because I can smell good today. And I will tell you this, that smell good wears off. Everybody stand. I'm fixing to close. We're going to close here. Just, I'm, just, I'm through. But that, that smell good wears off. You cannot live your life by coming to us in a counseling session or a visiting a church or having a moment at the altar and saying, that's it. Thank you so much. I'm good for life. That's it. Oh, what a great message. That was such a good message. So good, Pastor. What a great message. Appreciate the counseling. Appreciate the book. We read a book. We watched a video. Now our marriage is going to be good forever. No, no, no. That wears off. Your walk with God, you have daily, daily, daily. I'm not going to disrespect this word of God, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to rub like this and say daily. Shower, shower down those blessings, Lord. Lord, just pour it upon me. Pour it on me, God. Lord, I need your word. I need your covering. You need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. It's Pentecost Sunday. And if you're not where you need to be, if you've got even the slightest hint or smell of a stench or a sin, it is time to take a spiritual shower right here in this sanctuary. You can come to the front or you can stay where you're at. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to, with my hands lifted high, I'm going to be like, Lord I am in this shower of the Spirit of God in the Holy Ghost presence of God as they begin to play some music and they're going to worship and sing and I'm going to raise my hands and say, Lord, wash me clean. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So every head bow, every eye closed. Please, no one looking around. Give somebody the due respect that they deserve right now. Don't look around. 
Make this a private moment for everyone around you. Shut your eyes, bow your head, please. I'll ask you very nicely. If this is you today and you say, I need a moment with God, I am going to raise my hand. Don't do it yet, but I'm going to say, I need to be touched today. I have got to have a move of God in my life. I want you to just raise your hand real high where you're at. Hands going up all over the building. All over the building. Please, please, thank you. Lower your hand, please. Lower your hand. Everyone, you can look. I want you to, everyone that's looking at me now, I want you to know this. There's way more hands raised than you can ever imagine. You know what that tells me? You're not alone. You're not alone. And for everyone who raised your hand, you're not alone. You're not alone. We serve a living God. We serve a mighty God who will wash away your sins. The water is ready. If you're, I know we got one that's getting baptized. Go ahead and make your way to the back. Here, we're ready to baptize that one I know. If, if, if you're ready, start making your way right over here. Let's give her a great hand getting baptized in the name of Jesus today. If you're here today, we have robes in the back. We got lots of towels. And, it, and you have this moment right now. You say, I need to be washed right now. I need to be free of sin. I want to be washed clean by the, by the blood of Jesus and take on the name of Jesus. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, you need to be baptized right now. Why tarryest thou? Why wait, the Bible says. Don't wait another day. It's time to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Don't walk out of here stinking. We don't have literal soap, but we got some spiritual soap. So let's get, let's get back on the sanctuary and where we're at right now. Now is the time to make up your mind as you already have been through this whole service. I'm not walking out with any kind of sin on me. So why don't we right now as a, as a church, let's just do it all together. Why don't we just all raise our hands in unity and say and begin to pray this. Lord, move in this house. Lord, move on my spirit. Lord, move on me physically, Lord. Help me, Lord, to be washed clean in the name of Jesus. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. But the blood of Jesus. Come on, this is sing it like you mean it.
but your sins. The blood of Jesus. He died for you. He shed his blood for you.
Yes. Glory oh, to God. Let's praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's amazing grace. How sweet. How sweet. How sweet the sound. It's a sweet sound. That's sweet. I was wretched. I had a stench. I had stink on me. And he washed me clean. He washed me free of sin. I'm delivered in the name of Jesus. You're going to be delivered from every bondage and chain in the name of Jesus. It works. It works. It works. Results matter. If you're still here in this sanctuary today, I know several have left, but there's a lot of people still here. And if you're here today and you're still in this sanctuary and you need a touch from heaven for yourself, for your spouse, for your marriage, for your children, the kids are still downstairs. And if you still need help, don't leave out. You cannot leave out of here with any kind of issue. Because the one who can restore, the one who can put back into place, the one who can rearrange all of the mess, the stench, he is here. He's in this house. Do not leave with any, 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 any stench, anything. We're going to walk out of here clean, delivered, 
free from sin. If we're at odds with our spouse, we're going to walk out of here hugging each other, loving each other, and say, Lord, restore my marriage. Lord, put back into place what the devil and the enemy is trying to steal. I need some people to gather around this family right here. Come on. Let's pray for them. Pray for them in the name of Jesus. There's a reason. We don't need to know why. They came up here and they said, we have got to have something happen in our marriage. It needs to happen. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. It's an amazing grace that's going to touch you right now. It's an amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet. 